Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful day it is today. Praise God. I've already met a handful of born-again Christians in this line. That's good news. Uh, there's a lady right there raising her hand. I guess she professes Christ as her Lord as well. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, the, uh, this message is for Christians as well, but it's uh, also for non-Christians. I'm going to read a passage out of this wonderful book known as the Bible. Uh, it's a passage uh, that actually warns the non-Christians of what will happen to them if they do not become born again. And it's the love of God that compels me to come out here and, and love by warning you, but also shed the grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ as well. Amen. Amen. In the book of Revelation, uh, it's called the, the Great White Throne Judgment. And it's a warning, my friends. And then John, John said, he saw in heaven, then I saw a great white throne, and him, Christ, who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which are written in the books, and the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. My friends, a biblical love warns if you're not written in Christ's Lamb's book of life, Jesus Christ will cast you into the lake of fire, which will be the second death. And that word cast in the Greek means he will violently, with violence, he will throw you into hell. Because God has a holy hatred of sin, especially mine. But my friends, the good news is that the same God that is infinite in injustice and wrath is also infinite in grace and love. But the question is, which attribute of God will you come to know when you give your last breath? Here's a passage for Christians. It comes with great exclusivity because it is exclusively for Christians only. And this is really awesome. It's very encouraging because there's nothing that can harm a Christian. Your body may be, but not your soul. And the Word of God right here says, for those that are born again in this line, or for those that are in this line that will become born again, this passage will apply to you. And it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we who are, we are more than conquerors through Him, through Christ, who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things, nor present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do I hear any amens? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, that's a, that is a very encouraging verse, Lord. There's not a fire that can destroy a Christian. There's not a hurricane that can fire that can destroy a Christian, my friends. Cancer cannot even destroy a Christian. You cannot kill a born-again Christian. You can only change their address. Because when they give their last breath, they will be dispatched into heaven rather than be dispatched into hell where they will be under condemnation forever. But my friends, I've told you some bad news. I've told you some good news. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. The Bible warns in John chapter 3 that if you are not born again, according to verses 3 through 5, that you are already under condemnation. You are already condemned, my friends. I'm not here to condemn you. If you're not saved, you're already condemned. That's why you must be born again of the water and Holy Spirit. Because all it takes is one little sin to condemn you into hell. Just a little lie. What if you've lied? What if you've stolen? What if you had lust in your heart or committed adultery? What if you've uh, committed murder? But Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 5 that if you've had hatred towards anybody, that is murder. Yes, right. 
That means all the racists that we've seen on TV lately, they are committing murder according to God's holy standard. Yes, Jesus. They may have never pulled a trigger and killed a man, but according to God, they've killed many. And, they're in the, and, 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 and hatred in the heart is, is murder, my friends. But God is graceful and loving, and He will grant you repentance and a, and a, and a new, creation, new creation in Christ if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father but through me. My friends, Romans 6.23, again, the bad news and the good news in one verse. For the wages of our sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Will you know Jesus Christ as your loving Savior? Yes. Or will you come to know Him as the judge of wrath that will throw you in the lake of fire? Please call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Respond to that gospel call, folks. Real, real quick, I'm going to close up with the gospel in a nutshell. It's also known as the remedy. The God, you don't have to endure God's wrath and punishment. If you repent and believe in this. Most importantly, if you repent and believe in the one that I'm talking about right now. And that's, good, that's that God the Father came to us in the form of His Son, God the Son. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the virgin birth. Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, who had never sinned, the only man who had never sinned. Though He was man, He was fully God and fully man. He then went to that cross and He died of a brutal death on that cross because of my wicked sins. And then Christ was buried. And on the third day, Jesus Christ was bodily risen from the grave, my friends. And then He ascended into heaven where He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Right now where He will intercede on your behalf if you call upon Him to be saved. If you become born again. My friends, I'm pleading to you. I'm pleading to you to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus for salvation, yes. to repent and believe in that gospel, to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because Jesus Christ is either your Lord of all, or He's not your Lord at all. So please, repent and believe now before it's too late. God bless you all. If anybody has any prayer requests, or has any questions, please uh, ask any questions. And glory to God, we're applauding to the Lord, because I'm just an, uh, I'm just an ordinary sinner saved by an extraordinary Savior. What is this? looks like a church service. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> All right, guys. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I think there's, I believe there's more professing Christians in this line than I've ever seen because... I got God bumps. <laughs> God bumps. I like that. God bumps. It's better than speed bumps. God bumps. Yeah. All right, folks. Um, Thank you. That was right. wonderful. Anybody have any questions? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this crowd. Yes, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be glorified. We pray that Christ would be exalted. We pray that your Holy Spirit will, will be manifested throughout all of these people and that you would regenerate hearts here, Lord God. We, we know that your scripture already says that today is the day of salvation. But I pray, Lord, that we would experience that here amongst this in this crowd, those who are not truly born again. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that Christians in this line were encouraged and ex exhorted. We give you all the glory and praise for that. And we pray for salvation for those that don't know you. In Christ's holy name, amen. Thank you. Woo, all right. Thank you. Amen. That's great. Okay. That was wonderful, sir. Well, praise God. The wonderful service. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful service. Thank you for your service. Thank you. You guys are all right. You guys are all right. God all right. bless you. All right. That was wonderful.